This episode of MMA Notes is brought to you by Wild Alaskan Company. Healthy, affordable, convenient fish. Right to your door. Get $15 off by following the link below. Nectar Sleep, the last mattress you'll ever need to buy. Get $100 off with code GWFIT100. All33.com, meet your new work chair. Get active, be active, and sit in motion all day, relieving your stress and aggravation. Use code CHAIR20 for $100 off your order. Liquid Web, one of the top hosting providers around. Save $49 off all VPS plans with code BINGO49. Defense Soap, the world's best soap for wrestlers, jiu-jitsu, and MMA athletes. Use code MMANUTS for 15% off. Hey fans, this is MMA Nuts, episode 474. 474. My name's Ingo Weigold. Matt Grimm, MMA Show. Bye, my fans. Four my fans walk live between serious and ridiculous. I couldn't remember what episode it was for a second. I'm like, uh. <laughs> I don't know anymore. Every day is the same day. It's the same. But I think this is the point in the show where we must introduce something that happened that was quite comical about two or three minutes ago. Right? <laughs> yeah. Before we were about to. So I'll set it up for you. We were about to start the show and you were telling a joke or something and you were trying to be funny with your vodka. I was trying to say, man, I really don't have that much vodka left. (laughs) And then I didn't realize this cap wasn't on. And then hopefully I'll post a little uh, video of me pouring vodka all over myself and then having to fucking change clothes because I took a vodka shower. Yes. So sad. This is all the vodka left. It's very small. Just inject it. It'll go faster. Suppository. I'll stick the bottle on my ass like a fucking beer bong. Oh, it's open! (laughs) No, I have none. (laughs) What the fuck did you just do? Did you pour? I just poured vodka all over myself. (laughs) I gotta fucking hang on. I gotta gotta change. That was (laughs) the bottle. I might put that in the show. (laughs) Fuck. That was epic. My whole shirt is fucking wet. My pants are wet. I've got a handful of vodka. I wake up, my pants unbuttoned. I don't know what's happening. Ah, for shit. I'll be right back. Hang on. God damn it. (laughs) That's epic. Look. Look. That's pretty bad. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) That's the best. I love it. Yes. And I thought I was the only one wearing sweatpants on this podcast, but I, I noticed when you stood up, you were as well. <laughs> so. I have indoor and outdoor pants. <laughs> if I'm not going outdoors, it's sweatpants all fucking day. All right. <laughs> I love if it. I go outside, then I put the jeans on. Jeans outside, sweatpants or terry cloth shorts indoors. Yes. It's, it's got to be loose fitting, yes. you know, comfortable, Comfy. easy access. That's right. In case you got to blow out the bathroom. (laughs) (laughs) It's just a daily in the Griffith household. (laughs) Yes, exactly. And how about about this weather, huh? We're getting this fucking cold spell again. Uh, It's spring in the Midwest, and we always get this hot, cold bullshit. It was really nice over the weekend, and now it's raining and cold again. So I'm assuming it'll be warm shortly. So (laughs) I was going to say, are we going to get that annual May snow that we seem to get? Maybe. I don't know, but there's killer hornets. Did you hear about this? Just as the coronavirus is winding down, we have killer hornets from Japan. Apparently, these fuckers decapitate bees and take the heads to their young or something for food. That's pretty crazy. What kind of asshole? (laughs) That's pretty crazy. Like, bee. It's almost, you're almost a cannibal at that point, because I feel like you're in the same family. You're a bee, you're a hornet, you're a wasp, you're whatever. Yes. But why? Like, isn't there something else? I thought they were killing mice, too. Go uh, kill all the mice. Do us a favor. Well, I think the eagles and hawks need those, right? The mice. I don't know. It's going to fuck everything up. It'll all work out. Uh, you know what's Aliens. awesome? Aliens. What? There is going to be, hopefully, a UFC this weekend, yeah? What are, what's the odds that this fucking thing actually takes place? Where, where are you placing this? We're pretty I think, close. I think it gets canceled. Really? Yeah. What, what, what's your odds then for it happening? I'm going to say 60% cancellation, 40% it wow. goes through. It's, it's more than half and half, but not by much. And what's, why, why is that? Um, because I think, uh, uh, it's happening in Florida, right? Yep. In Jacksonville? I believe so. I yep. believe, yeah. So uh, 
I don't know. I mean, the Florida Florida State seems like they're pretty lack loosey, but they just ended up closing the beaches again. I think because people were being cunts. So I don't know. Like it's going to be interesting to see if they actually let this proceed. Um, I think they will. They've been letting the WWE do all their fucking events there. And uh, I, I would say my percentage, uh, 91.7% that it happens. That's what I'm going with. We're so Tony close. Tony is on the card, man. Uh, is he the jinx? Him and Habib, right? Yeah, well, Habib's not on it, but Justin Gaethje is. Um, It'll all work out. For the lightweight interim title. Yeah, so Tony Ferguson has the potential to be the two-time interim lightweight title holder. Yes. Good for him. Very much so. So when they were talking about the event, they said they're going to guess, I guess they're going to administer two type of fucking tests for the coronavirus. They're okay. doing some kind of diagnostic swab test and an antibody test. So Sweet. it looks like they're actually doing like the right protocol if you were going to hold an event. Like, I'm all for fuck it, hold an event, do whatever you want, be as safe as you can. That's how I roll. It what looks like that's the a COVID. Good. Does that mean that, they ain't fighting? They're out. Okay. And then you got another problem (laughs) because it depends how many people has that guy interacted with. But I think that they've been testing everybody. Like as soon as they show up, test, 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 temperatures, you know, whatever they're doing. I just hope it all goes off because I don't need all these retarded MMA media who have been chastising Dana White and the UFC for trying to fucking bring sports back, trying to bring entertainment to us. And the people that are still going to cover it, but have been fucking chastising them for doing this. So I want it to go off with no problems and I'm going to hope for the best. Me too. Because I can't believe it, it was kind of refreshing to have a fucking break from MMA, right? Like we never get a break. We don't have a fucking season. It's two, four, seven, every fucking weekend. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Fight, fight, fight. Kill, kill, kill. Blood, blood, blood. What yeah. makes the grass grow? Blood, blood, blood. What do, green, <laughs> what do Marines do? Kill, kill, kill. Yes. That kind of shit. So I'm pretty fired up is what I'm trying to say. I, I can I'm ready that. to bleed. I think I'm going to cut myself this weekend. <laughs> Just out of principle. <laughs> okay. Sweet. Uh, and I may or may not be on vacation this weekend. <laughs> All right. Are you going to watch it? Uh, at some point. Okay. So I don't know if it'll be live or not, but I'll probably end uh, up getting it. You got nothing going on Saturday. Got my kids, put them to bed. Yeah, I mean the whole card. This is this this card is reminiscent of the old school UFCs where it's fucking pretty solid from top to bottom. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> I watched the countdown show for uh, just the main event. Like if you find that on. The UFC or UFC's YouTube account with Ferguson versus Gaethje. It's showing like, how did we get here? And it shows like all the other sports shutting down. And then basically here's the UFC rising up from the ashes. And like, ah, oh, this is pretty cool. I like how they're doing this. It looked cool. And then uh, you have Gaethje talking about, here's, here's his quote from, for this fight. He says, I need to have my nose broken. I haven't been able to breathe through my nose for like 12 years since wrestling. So hopefully one of those elbows cracks my nose and the UFC has to pay for that shit. It's an exciting ass fight. Okay. So we got Ferguson and Gaethje. We kind of talked about it before. We're going under assumption. Everything's happening. Who do you like in this fight? Man, I feel like it's a toss up because no matter what, what people say, I think the training is a question mark for, for everybody on this card. Like how much could they have possibly trained? How, how, how much cardio can they get, possibly have? Yeah. I think if it's a game of um, uh, uh, slobber knocker slash Homer Simpson style, which it, which it very well could be when guys are tired, mm-hmm. I'm going to have to lean Gaethje's way in that, in that one. Sure. So um, I feel like it could go either way, but I, I, I'm thinking Gaethje via KO is what I'm, I'm predicting, like second round-ish maybe third round when it gets kind of sloppy and people get tired, mm-hmm. all that power, you know, you're going with Gaethje. I love this. I think so. I, I think as much as I think Ferguson can pick him apart, I, I think 
I really think the cardio is going to be a factor on all these fights. It's going to be interesting to watch. So Gaethje, KO. Okay. I'm challenged with this one because Gaethje <laughs> is my favorite fighter. And if I look at where is he going to excel, it's the leg kick game. It's the stand-up. And his KO or <laughs> get KO'd mentality, he's happy either way. And I appreciate that from a yes. fan standpoint. Channeling his inner George Grigel. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. The best guy at jiu-jitsu. Fuck it, stand a bang. <laughs> stand a bang. All right, cool. So, Ferguson, you look at him, you think elbows, cardio, durability, creativity. But I feel like this – like he had been training for Khabib, so he should have had a, a solid training camp. I just don't know. Is he overtrained showing up for this? And he's super fucking hard to finish. Yes. And I, I, it's like, I want to pick Gaethje. This is another one where the heart says Gaethje. The brain says make the smart move and pick Ferguson. And Ferguson's probably, he can be entertained with just a fucking fold-up chair. That guy can train <laughs> with a fold-up chair, and he doesn't need much more. Some driveway gravel, I don't know. And <laughs> fucking roll around in that to toughen himself up. Yes. So I, it's like, I feel like the training favors him, but did he overtrain? And Gaethje, what happens if he just fucking lands leg kicks nonsensically on Ferguson? Like, what happens to him? Is he going to be able to operate, or is he just going to lay on the ground and try to beg Gaethje to come in? So it's like the longer the fight goes on, the more I favor Ferguson. And really? I think, yeah, I, I think I got to pick Ferguson as much as I hate to do that. I don't like betting against my favorite fighter, but I feel like I got to do it in this case. Okay. I got to pick Ferguson. I don't, I don't think he can finish Gaethje, but you're looking round three or round four. Because, again, Gaethje hasn't had a full camp. You know, he's maybe six weeks in, and he, it was like the fight, it was on, and then it was off, and it was on, and it's still on. But he also went off the wagon for like a day or two when yeah. all that shit. Like, Fuck it, I'm eating pizza and drinking beers. All yeah. right. That's what I would do. There you go. And uh, we'll close some picks later. I don't have the Magic 8 Ball handy, or I'd Magic 8 Ball pick you. Okay. And then what about Henry Cejudo and Dominic Cruz? I'm kind of surprised Cruz is coming back from another, I don't know, two-year, three-year layoff from X amount of fucking injuries, right? Nobody cares. I'll just say <laughs> – I'll say – Cruz looks to be the faster fighter, the more unpredictable, but I feel like he's going to shuck and jive and blow his knee out. That's my prediction. Right. Like know. Patrick Cote against Anderson Silva. Well, Cruz looked fine and when he came back last time, right? I think he, had, he said there's no such thing as ring rust. I'm not worried about that part. I, just, I don't know. Like, I, don't, I, I fail to see how this is going to be an exciting fight, but whatever. I don't know. Cejudo looks like he's juiced to the gills right now. <laughs> I don't know how much people have been testing or testing at all. I think, who the fuck was it? Eric Andrews posted a picture. He said USADA sent him like a box full of test kits to test himself. And I don't know if that was a joke or not, but <clears throat> how the fuck are you doing drug testing? I don't think any drug testing is going on right now. So hopefully all these guys fucking juiced up and did a lot of bullshit and EPO, whatever, and then it, it fades out of their system. I think you stop a few weeks before. It'll all work out. Matt, I think you're going to be yelling at the television when you watch this fight. If you think about it, Dominic Cruz has a 100% decision in all of his 24 fights. 100% decision. That, that's my favorite way to uh, <laughs> finish a fight is by decision. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And Cejudo is only 58%, but combined, if I'm doing my mathematics correctly, that's a 98% chance of decision. That's great. That's what I want. It's my it's favorite weight that. class, like the shitty <laughs> fucking pie weights. All uh, I'm hoping for is a first round KO from Cejudo. That's a, or Dominic Cruz blows out his knee first round. They're going to be talking, I'm happy either way. Well, maybe, but Rogan's going to be talking about how crafty and elusive Dominic Cruz is and how his style is so exciting and that he can like uh, shuck and drive and, and keep moving for that whole time. Yeah. It's going to be boring. I, I'm not excited about this fight. I might even skip it. <laughs> I'm going. My <laughs> prediction is Dominic Cruz blows out his knee. 
I hope he. I don't want to say I hope he tears every CL in his knee, but I hope he tears every CL. <laughs> okay. I don't wish that on anybody, but Dominic Cruz. I'm gonna say it's a majority draw. Okay, fair enough. We're gonna have controversy for sure. I don't feel like everybody's gonna be on top of their game because no. from fighters to refs to judges, everybody's fucking rusty as shit, and. I can't wait to see the judges with their masks on. I hope they wear something crazy. And what if you have – who was that that had the epic uh, – Mike Beltran. The beer. What if he's fucking refing with his fucking coronavirus uh, mustache mask? <laughs> Remember that from a few weeks ago? Epic. I hope he does that. But anyway. You know what we're fight gonna... I'm looking forward to on this card? Hmm. It's not even on the main, main card. It's Anthony Pettis versus Donald Cerrone. I think Number that's going to be a barn. Dose. Number. Yes, they're going, to, they're going to run it back, and I think it's going to be exciting. And it's going to be fireworks, and I'm predicting a knockout on this one. From who? Who's knocking who out? <laughs> it's just a knockout? Is that what you're going with? I'm afraid to say, say because I, I feel like Pettis has got Cerrone's number, but I don't know. I feel like Cerrone, I don't want to say he's washed up, but he's, he's wearing the mileage of late. Correct. To be respectful. That's why I'm saying that. I, I, think, I think he's approaching that like Chris Lieben, Chuck Liddell territory yeah. near the end of their careers where the wear and tear and the constant fighting and grinding and weight cutting is just catching up to him now. And he's almost 40. Isn't he like 38, 37, something he's like that? He's high 30s and, you know, yeah. fighting five, six times a year for how many times? It's a lot. It's a lot. And I love him, but I, I just – you know, I think but there's a guy who I feel like when I, I think about who would thrive in this kind of training environment, I think Ferguson, I think Cerrone actually was. He's got his fucking own BMF ranch, and they're probably bringing people in. And Gaethje, going back to that fight, he said he brought in, I think, uh, I think Usman came in and trained with him. Mm. And who the fuck else? Dariush? Someone else. But he, he was flying people in to train with him, which I thought was pretty interesting because, you know, that's a lot of trust to have to fly some guys in and fucking train and fight with you, you know, yeah. spar with you. I agree. And then some of the other fights, you know, Uriah Hall and Jacare, like, fuck. Asparza and Waterson, Fabrizio Verdum and Alexi Olenek. Who was on this card? I didn't know that. Yeah. And it was Perfect. funny because there's that one video – of, remember, like, Ferguson and Verdum got in it at yes. some weird conference, and Ferguson's like, listen, bitch, I'll fucking ankle pick you. <laughs> like, <laughs> and, and Ferguson's like, you know what? Enjoy fighting on my undercard. And I don't remember how long ago that was, but now that came to fruition. <laughs> it, it did. These bear, no one I didn't see him. He's way down there. Yeah, he's not even on the main card. That's what's crazy, because you look at <clears throat> the preliminary card, and it's Four solid fights that could easily be on the main card. Mm -hmm. And who? Someone posted this. Let me find it. Oh, Damon Martin said all the prelims are going to air on ESPN and ESPN Plus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. But um, I don't know if that still means that you need the pres the prescription, not the subscription. You need the <laughs> prescription. I have a ESPN prescription for you, sir. To see it on ESPN Plus. Okay. Oh. I feel like we need more cowbell. Yes. You got a prescription. I feel the need for speed, man. That's right. I just watched that movie the other day. Did you? The original. It, it holds, holds up. It, it holds, holds up. It definitely holds up. For sure. The second one probably won't. I don't, did that even come out? I don't, I'm not to I'm not going to watch it. No, I have no interest. Zero. None. I might just watch it despite you. I don't know. Fine. Go for it. Just to tell you it was awesome and you should watch it. <laughs> you won't, I can't even buy into that, though. I think I agree it's bullshit. Bastard, it's not going to be good. How can it be? I fucking... Uh, I'm just going to leave it. <laughs> okay. So how about the other cards that are showing up this next three weeks? Let me share my screen here. Because uh, it's like we go from something super epic to... You know, here's the May 13th card. You have oh, Anthony geez. Smith, Glover Teixeira. Oh, okay. Ben Rothwell and 
OSP moving up the heavyweight. How about that? But then uh, you look, you start looking at the rest of the car, you're like, huh? And then the next part, it's like you got some names. You got Orlovsky. Orlovsky, what the fuck? <laughs> I don't know who he's fighting. You got Michael Johnson. Okay. Then we go to the May 16th card. Alistair Overeem versus Walt Harris. You got Claudia Gadelia, Angela Hill. And then it starts to kind of go up. You got Barboza, Eric Anders. Things are starting to go off the rails. But I feel like we're getting back to normal UFC. When we start, talking. these cards are some of the worst cards I've ever seen. <laughs> what is happening? I, um, I just need guy on street corner. You want to fight? Come on. Who wants to fight during the COVID? I would do it if I was uh, a fighter. I'm fucking. I would do it 100. percent But I'm not a fighter. Because you, you ain't fighter. getting paid if you ain't fighting. True. This ain't the World Series of Fighting or whatever the fuck it is called. This ain't no Bellator. You say no Bellator? Look. Yeah. I feel like they need to file for unemployment. Who? Fighters. Oh. Can they? They're independent contractors. I don't think you they can. They can file for unemployment. Oh. That's what some, some people smarter than me were saying. Okay. Fair enough. So what else you got some news-wise? Ah, I got something good for you. Did you know hmm. that our friend, Junior DeSantos... It's looking quite svelte, my, my friend. He's down to 238 pounds on the ketogenic diet. Looking I, pretty sexy. I feel like this angle. I, what happened to Luigi? I feel like I'm going to put a, a fucking hat on him. Mario and Luigi, uh, the steroids just, it did not work out. That, that, if, if I ever post a picture like that, kill me. <laughs> fucking kill me. But that's not the picture you should be posting. I just wonder, he has no pecs. What, it's like, he's very, like, straight. It's a very strange body style, right? But yeah, I don't know what happened. He looks uh, a little diseased. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't mean to say that, but it doesn't look good. It that, just doesn't. Yeah, that mustache is not doing him any favors. No, he looks a little rapey. I think that's what it is. It looks a little rapey. <laughs> He's like, come to Papa. <laughs> <laughs> like, come on. We're all friends. Yes. Ugh. But he's happy. I mean, that's the positive. So I, I got a Luke Rockhold story for you. He was ah, talking that was one of my new stories. Good. Go ahead. To Submission Radio. Uh-huh. About almost getting attacked by a homeless lady. So here's the story. I'll read it as Luke Rockhold, but not in Luke Rockhold voice. She was on the bus stop, man. She, she looked bad, like homeless, something along those lines. And she looked like probably meth or something and just nasty, nasty look. A lot of crap all over her face. Maybe some blood or something I saw. She was super out of it. She glanced at me like real quick, looked down. And I didn't think anything of it. I just kind of stayed on my path on the edge of the sidewalk and I started walking. As I got closer, she popped up out of nowhere and ran at me like some zombie or something. It was wild. It was the last thing I expected. I was walking and minding my own business with my dog, and this chick just runs at me within 15 feet or something. She just jumped at me and started to run like, ah! And she started hocking a loogie like she was going to spit on me, like it was full, just trying to scare me or infect me kind of a thing. I don't know what she was on, but then like anything I wanted to be around. It happened so quick, so instinctually. The thing just ran at me and was hocking this loogie, and I was like, what the fuck? I didn't know what to do, and as it got close to me, I just reared up with just a vicious front kick and just launched that thing in the air, and just like instinctually, and the thing just went up and landed up on the ground and literally like started quivering like a vampire frying in the sun or something. Honestly, it happened so quick, I didn't even think of anything. I just thought she wasn't even paying attention. thought she was pretty out of it on drugs. She just glanced up for a second, maybe like 25 feet away, but... When I got near her, maybe like 15 feet, she just ran up. She got up and ran at me. It was funny because she was getting her spit ready. She must have had like dry mouth or something because I, I watched that. Like I caught her like mid-projection, straight down the middle, this nasty kick right out of nowhere. I didn't have time to think about it. I watched the spit hang in the air and pretty much just fall right on top of her. I was like, how did I come out of this clean and not get touched? It was unbelievable. And I was just like, check myself, nothing touched me, nothing got on me. 
I was like, I'm out of here. <laughs> so this motherfucker just fucking stomping the homeless. <laughs> <laughs> hey Luke Rockhold, what are he's you doing? He's probably looking for a fight. It's like a train. He's like, let me go in the park and try to instigate something with a homeless person. Yeah. <laughs> like, are you, are you looking at me? Are you trying to fucking spit on me? Whack! <laughs> Whack! You didn't see that coming, did you, motherfucker? <laughs> oh my god, Luke, he's beating up. Luke Rockhold people. bum fights because like, <sighs> he's bringing that shit back. We haven't had bum fights in a while. No. I don't know what else to say about that, but. Good for him. Well, <laughs> and good that he's bragging on fucking kicking a woman. And that shit just got pushed right under the fucking carpet. Nobody oh, said yeah. shit about that, right? No. That's because there's too much other stuff going on right now. <laughs> yeah, no, you can pretty much get away with anything, right? The UFOs. Government released, what, some footage of UFOs? And Yes, that was news for about two minutes. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say about ten seconds. I saw that clip and went, Ah. <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> Back to COVID. Right. Back yeah. to reality. All right. What else uh, is going on? Okay, so did you see this story about Johnny Hendricks explaining why USADA forced him to retire? No, from no, go ahead. Okay, so... <laughs> okay, here's what he says. You know what? I'll be honest with you. I had 26 random USADA tests and I passed them all. Whenever USADA came in, did my body ever change? What hurt me the most was I always thought if I can't live life to the fullest, then what's the point? I like to drink beer and eat fast food, but I train just as hard. And if I can't eat and drink, I'll retire. I couldn't enjoy my life and do the things my fam- with my family, then I won't do it. Um, so he's basically saying that you sort of fucked him up because he used to be able to eat cheeseburgers or what, Baconators, right? And mm-hmm. drink and party. Big and Baconator. his weight would go all over the place. And then he could cut weight, right? And he could do an IV bag and he'd like be bam, he'd be back, you know? Then, then he's saying after they stopped doing that, he's like, now he's like, try, tr- try to drink all this water. You'll never rehydrate yourself. So I started feeling, he started feeling like shit on the fight days. And he was, mm-hmm. that's probably where the 70% came in. Right. Yeah. I remember he said that when he yeah. fought GSP. Yeah. So, um, he's saying that the whole IV thing is what fucked him. Nothing else. Cause he's saying he's <sighs> the IV thing. Do you buy that? No. I don't buy anything because if you look at his body and everybody's body changed once you fucking USADA came in, I'd mm-hmm. say, well, I won't, not everybody because there's probably a handful of clean guys, but I would say 90% were not clean. And some of the guys, as soon as USADA came in, took a fucking nosedive, Hendrix being one of them. Yes. Wide men. Yep. I'm trying to think of all the guys, but. There, there was a noticeable change. Belfort, obviously, but we yeah. thought of Belfort. Well, we knew about him. Yeah, I think, but I think here. yeah. And Hendricks was saying, "What he's five eight, two twenty right now, or something crazy. He can't fight at middleweight. He's too pretty for the bare knuckle boxing." He was talking about the bare knuckle, saying how uh, they changed his opponent like five or six times before the fight, and then you know he just took the fight anyway and ended up losing. But I, yeah. I get it. It's tough, but sometimes it's time to move on he's one of those guys and he used to fucking murder people who was who it martin Catman? they fucking oh, starched yeah. i think john fitch like he was starching fools oh yeah he was wick in the first round and then and the, you know look at the gsp fight look at how gsp looked after the fight hendrix looked totally fine gsp did not uh, my theory was that GSP was off the shit for that fight and didn't perform because he was, that was back when GSP is trying to get everybody, oh, let's do all the drug testing. And Hendrick's like, fuck you. I'm not doing that. Yeah. And then GSP gets his ass beat. Should have lost that fight. No. It's a gift decision. Tell. And then, does, well, that was in Canada, wasn't it? Uh, probably. He yeah. probably fucking. Overweighed too, like when he fought Nick Diaz, right? Then he weighed extra <laughs> pound, but it's Canada, Canadian weights. It's all right. We don't care. <laughs> yes, it's kilograms. Yeah, not, not pounds. Yeah, they don't give a fucking GSP yeah. in Canada. That's like uh, any Brazil fighter in Brazil's or Michael Bisping in the UK against Matt Hamill. Yep, they give no shits. So I got I got an interesting one for you here. Let me share this. So. 
Darren Rovo was tweeting. He said, innovation says for 20 bucks. I don't, I'm not going to pronounce any of these right. He says, Bungdelizgia, Bungdelizgia team, Borussia, fuck this. I'm just going to share screen. Bund- can... Bundesliga, Borussia Dortmund, yeah. Yeah, hang on. I'll just yeah. share this. Soccer, yes. He said, uh, they're offering fans to put a cutout of themselves in the stands. Money goes to raise charities. So That's look how awesome. fucking cool this shit is. So literally, you could have the stands filled with pictures of yourself, and then they're going to donate it to charity. Can the UFC do this? Can we be in Lazy Boy's cage side? I like it. I'll fucking make that shit happen, Ingo. I think that's some cool shit. That's, do you want to have empty stands, or do you want to at least have some people in the stands, right? <laughs> That'd be pretty fucking awesome. 20 bucks, huh? I'd fucking, I would pay 100 bucks to put us in the front row. There you go. UFC, make this happen. <laughs> I might even do 200 bucks for us to sit there That'd virtually. Virtually. Or put, like when, uh, who is it? Snowden was on the Joe Rogan podcast and they have, you know, a virtual, put fucking monitors with me and zoom me in and let me sit fucking front row. Yeah. What does that cost? You want to get revenue? There's revenue. And then let me see what the fucking, what it looks like from that seat, right? You can get creative. Fucking make some shit happen. This is That'd be weird though for the fighters. It'd be just like seats upon seats of like cameras and laptops. It'd be really strange. Yeah, but you could see the people. Like you could see me virtually sitting there, right? That'd be cool. Because I wonder too, I mean, I think Gagey addressed this. Like how do the fighters handle the fight when you're fighting in front of no fans, right? Mm-hmm. Some, I think, are going to do well. Some are going to eat shit. But it's a way different environment. Of course. There's no energy in the room. Right. And you feed <clears throat> off of that energy. Oh, for sure. Yes. And I think, who is it? GSP even said that. I've, I experienced it. I felt it. Like, you're hitting people, and the crowd's going, ah! You're getting hit, and the crowd's going, ah! And you're like, oh, fuck, I better hit back. I better do more. <laughs> GSP said... It's like, fuck, I'm out there. I hear that, people. Fuck this GSP accent. I can't even try it. <laughs> you used to do it a lot, and it was great. What happened? I, I give up. I give up on accents. Okay. This coronavirus fucking killed all my accents. Okay. Okay. It's supposed to kill your sense of smell, not your accents. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. For me, I'm half retarded, half. I'm 50% success, 50% ingenuity, 100% sexual. 10% retarded. <laughs> That's more than 100%. <laughs> uh, 15% drunk? I don't know. I spilled vodka all over myself. I felt like I took it rectally. Yeah. Uh, what else is going on, Ingo? I got nothing. Uh, let's see what else is going on. Oh, this, is, this shit's crazy. I can't believe this one. I got to open this up. And then I'll share my screen. Let me uh, open this up. I got to get sound. Oh my god, it's so loud. Hang on. Should I like remove my oh. oh. No, I, I just the volume, but apparently Mike Tyson is ready to make a comeback at the age of fifty-three. <laughs> oh yeah? And you see him hitting pads. It's fucking frightening. Uh, probably I'm sure he's still fast as hell. He's he's hitting pads with Rafael Cordero, by the way. Oh nice. He's so fast and still has power. That's 53. Are you fucking kidding me? Uh, That's pretty crazy right there. Yeah. So my next question, I forgot what he was saying. Let me pull it up here. I got to stop this in the background. But he was talking about he is... He wants to go back to the gym and get in shape and to be able to box three or four round exhibitions for some charity and stuff. Mm-hmm. So is this what we're going to start Zufa boxing off with? Possibly. Well, it makes a whole hell of a lot of sense. <clears throat> Mike I mean, Tyson. Are you kidding me? I mean, see what I'm seeing right there for someone who's 53, that is fucking ridiculous. All right. Super ridiculous. But, and I think Cadero was talking about this, saying this is like his first time back after 
I don't know, 10, 15 years of hitting pads, that's mm-hmm. what you're seeing. That's not even like prime 53 year old. That's just, I'm getting back into it, Mike Tyson. I'm like, oh my mm-hmm. God. Can, I don't know who you put him up against, but anybody I'm okay with. I don't know about yes. you. Boxing? Yeah. yeah. Hey, Connor. Connor McGregor? Connor McGregor, what are you up to? <laughs> oh, my God. I, I, Connor's so dead if you tried that one. Yeah, not a good move for him. <laughs> Tyson's like 50 pounds heavier. Come yeah. On. And then someone re-edited that video. And I'll, I'll get that up in a second here. It's a little challenging for me to get these with volume because you need volume, and I don't want to kill you. With the was the last one too loud or okay? Or, Perfect. Okay, I got about the right volume. So someone edited that, and that is coming up here. This is Chris Ashley edited that. So here's that same video with a nice little edit. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's what would really happen. Smacking <laughs> you through the fucking wall, but oh man, that's pretty good. Yeah, Moving right along. So I heard there's a rumor floating around. Uh, you know how they're doing the Fight Island, mm-hmm. and uh, Jorge Masvidal as uh, maybe defending his BMF title on said fight island against Conor McGregor. No shit. Yeah. Are you in? I like it. I like it a lot. Let's do it. Yeah, I think we need weird shit on the island. If you're going to do island like fights. Weird sex shit? <laughs> whatever. <laughs> fucking sex swings. Uh, winner can do whatever they want to the other winner's wife and or fighter. Wow. Okay. I don't know. Whatever it takes. <laughs> I'm game, because I'm not in. I'm not <laughs> You guys do whatever you want. Coronavirus. Let's do a little tweet of the week. I don't even know what my tweet of the week is. I have two options. Oh, shit. This is Mercedes 10th Planet. She's posting this one. <clears throat> there we go. Does even Satan is taking to coronavirus seriously and go? <laughs> <laughs> that is epic. Yeah, that one. That one looked. That look. It looks like it's probably not a nice ass based on the photo. Uh yeah. You never know. It could be a guy for all I know. Yeah. And then Jai Goodman posted something. I think Dana White was on Uncensored and he was talking, and he said, "I think by now everyone realizes that Bob Arum is a dickhead." Uh, this guy's been talking shit about the UFC and me for 20 years. He's fucking bankrupt, this guy. You don't want to put fights on. You can't afford to put fights on. You fucking jack off. Okay, good for him. I don't know. I just like Dana White calling people fucking jack offs. <laughs> and it yeah. just looks crazy when it's on a fucking tweet versus when he said it. I'll have to listen to that. He's been very vocal of late, Dana White, doing lots of um, shit. Chick pick of the week. We got uh, Valerie Lareda. She's in quarantine saying, hey, it's another morning in fucking quarantine. Here we go. Oh, my God. I'm just hanging out saying, hey, what's up? What's up? Valerie what? Lareda? Lareda. Yep. So we got that going. Might have to Google that. Yeah, she likes to post shit. And then uh, let's do some ass the nuts. You ready? Or are you Googling? I'm, I'm ready and I'm Googling. All right. Let me take a sip. At the same time. I have to get a closer look at that photo. Um, so. Uh, yep. Yep. <laughs> That's all good. <laughs> uh, whatever she's got going on, I like it. I'm I back. Like, I like those pajama jams. Maybe. Oh, my goodness. That Instagram is fire. It's, yeah, it's fire. Um, Dana White did a Ask Me Anything on Reddit and I picked yeah. out some of the top ones. Somehow it falls into Ask the Nuts, but... All the juicy stuff? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I took the top three from that. So yeah. someone says, hey Dana, you're about to be marooned on a desert island for six months. You're given a choice of one of the following three people to accompany you. Who do you pick? Tito Ortiz, 
Oscar De La Hoya or Ariel Hawani, and I'll give you Dana White's answer. He says, oh, my God, I would just fucking drown myself. <laughs> um, who would you pick out of those three if you're on a – Peter fuck. Ortiz, Ariel, Ariel Hawani, and who? Oscar De La Hoya. Uh, I'm with Dana. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be dead. I'm going to kill yeah. myself. I, I think I'm, I'd probably go with Tito, but then I'm probably killing myself after about an hour. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think you're going to survive that island with either, any of those guys. No, not so much. Uh-uh. And then <laughs> the next question, it's more for his answer. Someone says, listen up, clown shoes. Why'd you make Gaethje versus Ferguson, not just wait for Habib versus Ferguson? You know, White's response, listen, fuckface. Tony's ready to fight. Gaethje is one of the best in the world. This fight needs to happen. Less thing anything needs to do is keep waiting for Tony versus Khabib. Don't mind your fucking business. (laughs) So aggressive. (laughs) Ask me anything. Okay, I like it. The the last one from him. Someone asked, uh, which would you prefer to have returned to you? Your hair or your soul? (laughs) Oh. Dana White says, my hair and then Fuck you with a middle finger. <laughs> uh, now some real questions. So <clears throat> James Lynch had tweeted out, he said, UFC heavyweight champion Stipe Miocic says, with his gym clothes, he's not training MMA at the moment and doesn't have training options at home. Uh, I think that's fucking bullshit. Everyone's got an option. You just choose not to. He also won't fight during the quarantine without a proper training camp. So... Do you strip the title from Stipe if he refuses to fight during a pandemic? Why or why not? Is that a question for us? Yes, that's my question. I say strip the fucking title. He's the champ. Champions find ways to to win, find ways to compete. Don't give me this bullshit. I can't train. You're telling me he's a fireman. He doesn't have shit at the firehouse that he can't train with. That, That sounds like, and I don't like to say this, a bitch move. He just doesn't want to fight. You can. I'm okay with you saying I don't want to fight during a pandemic, but don't tell me you don't have fucking training options. You can do body weight. You can fucking hit. shadow box. You can fucking uh, hit a brick for all Sexercise. I care. Exercise. That's right. There's a ton of shit. Your <laughs> wife can hold pads. You can set something up. You can buy a fucking heavy bag. There's options. They may not be optimal, but there are options. And mm-hmm. I agree. I think you strip his fucking title 100% and you give it to DC. Because he wants that third trilogy fight. Mm-hmm. Who do you think is the best fighter to never win a UFC belt? Damian Maya. I agree. I don't. I didn't have much more to add to that. <clears throat> or I would say I'd add any Diaz brother probably. Yeah, I feel like they're always real close, but never right there. Maybe Donald they Cerrone. Don't fight enough. But yeah. I don't know. I mean, he's always real close, but never can pull it together on the night. Always the bridesmaid, never the bride. Yeah. I think it's that pressure. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tyler McMahon asks, this one's kind of lengthy, so here we go. He says, okay, so I'm going to give you guys a scenario and a question along with it to answer. Right at the beginning of this pandemic, Matt did a crazy thing. He pulled almost all his money out of his 401k and decided he was going to attack the stock market himself. As the days went on, Matt somehow just kept picking all the right stocks. I like where we're going here. And now after a month, he finds himself in the 1%, even better, the elite. He is now one of the richest men in the world. During this time, big companies have also taken massive hits. The UFC and Bellator are now looking to sell. Matt decides to buy both companies with his ungodly amounts of money. You then give Ingo Bellator and keep the UFC to yourself. To make things more interesting, instead of keeping the rosters intact, you decide to have the first ever MMA draft. It's now time to draft your first five fighters each, taking turns. Each of you pick one fighter after another to see who has the better roster. Remember, these guys are your superstars, the people that are going to bring your company to the top. After five picks each, decide who would be better off in the long run. Uh And then... P.S. Now that you own the companies, you can also impl- implement any rules that you want. 
What changes would you make in the rules? Easily. We're going to have a tournament. Prime rules. We're going we're gonna to have a tournament for sure. Cross promotional tournament. <laughs> Year round tournament. Ongoing. Pride uh, rules, open weight, smaller cage, uh, all the drugs you want, thick ass round card girls. If we're going to keep some rules, we're taking points off for any foul. I want refs with the fucking cattle prod when there's no action, <laughs> like new motherfuckers. And I want that shrinking cage when there's a lack of action. I like it. Cage keeps shrinking. All right. You all want that kind of shit. For first pick? Sure. All right. Rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Ah, oh, <laughs> you win. Okay, All right, ahead. Conor McGregor. Shit. Uh, Conor McGregor. John Jones. All right, I, I'm making that's, notes. That's painful. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm taking Israel Adesanya next. Uh, uh, Israel Adesanya, huh? I'm yeah, because gonna... I, need, I need young and can fight for a while. Nate Diaz. Mm. Thought about it. All right, I'm taking Jorge Masvidal. Oof, good one. Um, Cyborg. Oh, you son of a bitch! You did that on <laughs> <out of> spite. <laughs> uh, shit. I got choices. Who's third? <clears throat> Let's take Francis and Ganu for my next. Okay, race. that's a good one. That's a good one. I'm gonna go with um, man, Tony Ferguson. Okay, writing this down. Shit, Tony Ferguson. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like I need to take a woman. I'm gonna take Shevchenko. Valentina Shevchenko, number five. Valentina Shevchenko? Yep. I need a woman champion since you took Cyborg out of spite. <laughs> uh, that's a good pick. I like that pick. Um, let me see. I'm looking up something. One second. Yep. Just pull the already... UFC, um, like the champs or whatever, the rankings. Go to the UFC website and hit rankings. Mm. I'm going to go... This is a tough one. Um, you already picked that. Who'd you pick? Usman? No, never. <laughs> I'm picking that fucking guy. I have, I have McGregor, Adesanya, Mazudal, Nganu, and Shevchenko. Um, I feel like in the spirit of Bellator, I got to pick Derek Lewis. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> you could have him. I get one more pick. That's five. You got you have John Jones, Nate Diaz, Cyborg, Ferguson, and Lewis. Okay. I mean it's solid. My my if I was gonna keep picking, I would either I'd probably take Gaethje next, a Nick Diaz, a Dominic Reyes. Like those are other guys on my radar, but hmm. it's it's so hard to pass like McGregor. The only reason I wouldn't take Jones is just because he's just out for so often. Like, how long is he going to be out this next time? I don't know, but if you got McGregor, the Jones is the natural next pick, right? Yeah. There's really no. He has to. You've got and it. Then, uh, or a Diaz brother, a Masvidal. I think Adesanya is that up and coming, so that's why I'm mm -hmm. kind of betting on him. I think he is young and can reign for a while, like a young Anderson Silva. Yeah, that makes sense. And then I think you might have got this one. I think your your picks are better. I thought it out. I did I had time to think about this. Ah unfair yeah, advantage. I, yeah, I do my research. Strategic. That's not fair. Uh I think we did the rule changes. Okay. Rodrigo Machado will close it out. It's time. Pound sign nuts rule. Pound sign Matt Rape Trade. Pound sign Ingo Sugar Daddy. Once again, I want to ask you guys some existential and philosophical questions. Okay. Number one, are beliefs and superstitions the same? Um, they can be. It depends. You walk under ladders? Me? Yeah. Yeah, I don't give a fuck. Right. It's stupid stitions. I don't, I, I don't believe in that. Or drop a... My mom always used to tell me when I was a kid... Oh, you dropped a silverware. That means someone's coming over. 
What, what <laughs> I the never fuck heard are that. you talking about? I've never heard that before. Which, which way was it pointing? Because that's the way they're coming from. <laughs> what, what kind of crazy shit is that? You don't tell a kid you drop so far a company's coming over. Oh, fuck, mom. So, yeah, they could be both. Uh, number two, are we the biggest threat to humanity? You mean humans? Yes. I mean, we're going to destroy everything. We're trying. We're doing our damnedest. Yes, we are. The earth is so clean right now. Maybe we just need to take a month hiatus every once in a while. Once a year, take a month break? Yeah, because I think it only took about a month for LA to be the cleanest it's ever been. And yeah. Looks like a China, tropical paradise. All those places are all Europe. Yeah. Everywhere it's all cleaner than it's ever been. It's pretty impressive. Yep. Uh, number three, do parallel universes exist? Yes. I feel like I'm in one right now. Deep inside of a pair. Maybe you shouldn't do mushrooms and maybe we wouldn't be here because you did mushrooms or acid or whatever. Like the chili peppers? Peyote. Yeah. I feel like I'll be playing a a bass. Yeah. And then today there is no MMA Nuts show because I've been busy this week, guys. However, I have some good news. Whacking off. Yeah. Yeah, (laughs) sweet. Oh, man. Uh, I'm continuing my diet since uh, the 1st of January, even during quarantine, and I lost more weight. I've officially lost 20.7 kilos, or for you guys, thank you, because I can't convert shit. It's like 45.6 pounds. pounds. That's fucking shit. Awesome. Says I weighed around 276 pounds, and now I weigh around 230. So I'm very proud of myself, and I'm going to continue to lose weight, take care of guys, and stay healthy. Hey, man, yeah, we go? we're fucking proud of you. Keep it up. I get it. Way to be. saying, like, the first month of quarantine, I did a lot of um, vaporizing Eat. some uh, weed, and I ate all the food. <laughs> 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 and then I said, eh, it's probably not a good lifestyle plan. And then I just dedicated yeah. myself to fitness. And oh, the shame. Healthy. Just like, oh, man, especially you don't clean up the mess the night before. Yeah, I noticed that was bad because you got to debate, like, do you want to feel the shame in the morning or do you want to feel guilt-free? I like to remember what you did. I I, I do half and half. Sometimes I just leave a little bit to remember. And I'm like, oh, fuck, I ate that. Oh, fuck, I ate a whole bag of cheese. Oh, fuck, I ate a whole box of Lucky Charms. Oh, fuck, I ate three, three bags of those spicy dill pickles. Who eats a whole bag of cheese? What kind of cheese? <laughs> and whatever gets in my way. Sometimes it's mozzarella. So, like, that's when you know you're really stretching. You just grab the mozzarella. The cheese with no fucking flavor. Just out of principle. You're like, I'm going to make this cheese taste awesome and eat okay. it all. Oh, okay. And then jam some chips in your mouth. And then maybe pour salsa in your mouth because you're too fucking lazy. <laughs> I don't know who does this. I'm just saying. Uh, only you. I've never done that. Well, I go for Although, I've come for, I go for up broke. with weird food combinations. I like to mix different cereals together. That's my thing. That's always like fun. what? Like I don't know. Whatever's in there. Sometimes it's honey nut Cheerios, honey bunches of oats, crackling oat bran, and like fucking Lucky Charms all okay. together. Just going for broke. I get it. Yeah. yeah. Are you doing dry or with milk? No, with milk, of course. Okay. I'm but I mean, crazy. I, can I just do dry. I just you can. It's better with milk, though. Make it rain in your mouth. It's there all you over. You know, fucking yeah. whatever. All right. Let's do a little fuck, Mary kill. Canil. Fuck, yeah. Mary kill. Celebrity edition number 90. Adult adventures number 26. I have too much shit open. Let's see who we're starting with. Gracie Glam, I, I believe. i to close some of these windows here. Hang on. Two, three, four, five. Okay. <clears throat> uh, why is this not showing up? Hang on. Uh, okay, there it is. What do we got? Ooh. Okay, Gracie Glam. Uh, oh, damn, she got a little hole that you can just... Access. Easy access. I saw a medical worker wearing a mask, and she cut a slit in the mask like that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, see your, I don't know if you know this, but I see your whole desktop. It looks like chaos. <laughs> oh, sorry. Hang on. You don't want to ever show the whole desktop because it is chaos. Huh. Let me try uh, my, this again. My mind has no icons. You're... 
Sorry. I like, I like my desktop. Thank ah, you. I don't like sharing the whole desktop. There's too much action on there. Gracie Glam. Okay. Yep. So there's her. She looks like trouble. Yep. Jenna Hayes. All right. All right. She's a little trailer trash. Thin. Yeah. Got no and then Tori Black. That girl looks dirty. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't bathe. No, like we're going to have to bang her, kill the one in the middle, and marry the first one. We're in agreement yet again. I love how Tori Black is in front of a thing that's, what does it say? Like something Alexis Texas, Texas butt whore or something? Is, <laughs> yeah. What is that? Is that Alexis what it says? Texas and butt whore <laughs> 17 or whatever. I don't know what's going on, but. Okay. For her. I think she likes a party. Mm -hmm. I get it. And uh, knowledge. I will start with I saw they had a new Assassin's Creed of Valhalla, and someone posted this sweet picture of it. Ah, it's the guy. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> yeah. I miss him. We haven't seen him in a while. No, we haven't. That game looks fucking cool, by the way. And what's next? Oh, what'd you watch this past week that was good or bad? Um, you know, I didn't watch a ton of TV this week. I did watch um, uh, John Wick as a movie. Uh, I'm still working through House of Cards. I highly recommend that one. I'm on like the last season. It's really good. Um, but John Wick, I forget how good that movie was. There's no plot, but it's just kind of a fun action film. Highly recommend that one. Um, what about you? Uh, the Last Dance still, you know, six episodes in. I think that's yeah. some awesome shit. Like watching Jordan and listen to the people talk about him and how he's able to just take over a game and you forget how good the guy was until you go back and rewatch. I just feel like, it, again, it's different than the guys from today because I can't even watch fucking basketball from today, but back yeah. then I could watch it. It and then, much better. yeah. And then I also watched Post Malone did a Nirvana tribute on YouTube that was pretty fucking good. And he had Trav Travis Barker as the drummer, and they, they sounded fucking potentially better than Nirvana. Which Wait, I didn't so they were in different locations doing this? No, they're on the same place, but okay. they were way far apart. So I think they're in Post Malone's house, okay. and they're fucking chugging beers and fucking rocking out i don't know how they did like an hour and 20 minutes but it was pretty fucking good so they post malone that. is singing or what yeah he's singing and playing guitar oh, i had no idea that guy was a mu musician too okay i didn't know but it was, was it was fucking on point it was really good okay that was good and Wait. then the last thing i'll close with i found the proper way to wear your fucking mask when you go out hey now yeah, now we're talking. What's going on here? That's what you got to do. That's how you do it. That's how I do it when I go out. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's why I'm getting into fights. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sir, you you can't come in this way. Sir. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to punch. I just said earlier, I'm going to punch a man or a woman. Next person that sticks their hand in my face like this. Or maybe I'll Luke Rockhold fucking push kick. Run someone. kick, safer. Yeah, and then I, I don't have that have contact. Shoe your hands. Yes. Yeah, you're gonna eat my shoe. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's all I got. Shut it down. Alrighty, that's been this week's edition of Emory Nuts. My name's Ingo Weigel. Matt Griffith. Thanks for playing. <laughs>